Let's see the breakfast and plus TV Africa. We take you through the pages of a national dailies. We call it Off the Press. Tunde Kolawole, legal practitioner, that's on standby via phone to be part of the conversation. Tunde Kolawole, it's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning, guys, for having me. All right, thank you so much. Uh, we look at the bold caption, APC PDP orders ask INEC to adjust 2023 election timetable. Senate will bring back federal government and ASU to negotiation table. Ahmed Lawan is quoted on that, urges students to avoid confrontation. Indeed. Insecurity in South East not targeted at headers. May T. Allah. And just before we move away from the daily independence, you have Senate amend electoral acts, makes elected official party delegate. Mm. 2023 presidency, if Jonathan runs, it will be wonder of the century. Umai, David Umai is quoted on that. And PDP decides fate of presidential aspirant today. 35 people killed in Northeast in a decade. According to a report, 2.5 million people displaced. 2023 presidency, it's the turn of Southeast. Former President Lushagun Obasanjo and Adebanjo quoted on that. Nigeria to end 663 billion naira annual medical tourism. Threats to strike after expiration of 21 day ultimatum. These are the headlines you find on the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. And away from that one, we'll move on to the Nation newspaper. Uncertainty in APC over Jonathan Emifili uh, Deshina. Adamu declines ex president's proposal. CBN governor in dilemma. AFDB president mum. Submission of forms closes. Why refineries are moribund by NNPC. TAM poorly done. That's internal and maintenance. Electoral Act amendment widens primaries participants. A Navy arrests 117 suspected oil thieves, six vessels. More protests over ASU strike extension. Let's see if we can take more. INEC rejects uh, parties' request for adjustment or adjustment of polls timetable. Chidima stabbed Atega several times, says witness. Or your senator joins APC. Dollar scarcity pushes more transactions to parallel market. Those are all of the stories on the front page of the Nation newspaper. Well, let's uh, check out the leadership this morning. PDP NEC holds crucial meeting over zoning today. 19 days to party primaries. Senate amends electoral act. Makes president, governors, order statutory delegates. I take that again. Senate amends electoral acts, makes presidents, governors, and others statutory delegates. Underneath, you find reps summon emergency plenary to carry out own exercise today. Act undergoes three amendments in two months. CS also insists on resignation of political appointees. INEC, IPAC disagree over extension of party primaries by two months. APC doubt closes sale of forms. Mogalu picks ADC nomination form. Uh, this are the writers underneath the board caption. And for 2023, Southwest, South, South. Aspirants betraying Southeast. David Umai is quoted on that. Southwest, South, South. Aspirants betraying Southeast. Uh, David Umai is quoted on that. And Nance give federal government and ASU nine days to open varsity. Or what will happen? I'm sure that uh, this is some of the questions. Fuel scarcity extends to northern states. May 29 handover is San Croissant, says presidency. And Chidima confessed to drugging and stabbing and killing Tega police tell court. The headlines on the leadership this morning. And finally, we have the Guardian newspaper. The lead story just below the pictures there. Uh, 2023 PDP may dump zoning as neck meets over 
Atom report. Several stories also by the left and the right and columns. TUC threatens action over ASU strike as uh, COE, that's Colleges of Education uh, Workers, uh, issue 21-day ultimatum. 18 political parties seek extension of deadline for primaries. INEC rejects plea, insists on June 3. Federal government gives occupants 30 days to vacate Lagos bridges. Sex scandal. Police arraign four Christland schools teachers. Bamiche BRT operation manager narrates how Ominikoro ran away. Other stories on The Guardian this morning. An editorial there are political parties and obscene money politics. PDP are running a distant third in AGT governorship polls, uh, says a survey. Afeni Ferry condemns Emifele's involvement in politics, request for restraining order. Pro Silva, Arewa Group urges Northern presidential aspirants to step down. All right, uh, uh, tenure extension I will hand over May 29 next year, Buhari replies Clark. Call the Bonks Wiki's $50 million fraud allegation. Dagogo faces fresh charges to take plea May the 16th. And Cross River PDP aspirants reject consensus. And those are all of the stories on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. Tunde Kola Wale, it's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you. All right, let's start with the Daily Independent uh, newspaper. No, I beg your pardon, let's start with The Guardian. It talks about uh, 2023 and PDP dumping zoning as NEC meets over Autumn's report. Now, we also know that zoning is part of the Constitution. I mean, the Constitution of the People's Democratic Party affirms zoning. Uh, but it feels like, you know, PDP is moving away from uh, the principle of zoning ahead of the 2023 elections. What are your thoughts? What are some of the things the best type of relation for any of these uh, frontline political parties to come to zoning? If you want stability in this country, if you want an inclusive governance, if you want all the different regions, tribes, and sections of the country to have the sense of belonging. Then the party should seek to be very humanly agreement that they have entered to be rotating the presidency and some of these other plum jobs between the north and the south. That is the way statement should be made. We should not allow personal ambition to override the overall interest of the country. Chunde Kalawale, do we still have yes, you? Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm standing by. All right. Uh, still on the Guardian, there are other stories uh, making headlines, uh, but let's just take one that is uh, uh, particular to uh, Lagos. Uh, it is something actually uh, disturbing. Uh, well, federal government uh, gives um, occupants 30 days to vacate Lagos bridges. It is still sad that um, in the year 2022, most Nigerians are still living under the bridge. How do you react, Barrister Kolawali? Sorry, I didn't get that. Okay, I'll take that again. Federal government okay, gives occupants 30 days to vacate Lagos bridges. Okay. That is, uh, it is a difficult to account. How so? Thousands of Nigerians live under the bridge on the daily basis to look up and some of these other urban centers in Nigeria. Some of the people also end their living, chasing, or kissing on those bridges. If you have had the chance to go to a place like Ocean at night, like, to go to Marina at night, like, you will be shocked about the multitude of people that you will find sleeping on that bridge and trying their trade or trying to any people under the bridge.
Last Sunday too, I was at a Penn Cinema Agig area. And I also noticed that hundreds of people have also started sleeping and earning their living under the overhead bridge that has been constructed at Agege. It's uh, a thing that we don't want to decree that people should vacate the place. Why are people occupying those places in the first instance? That is a question we should ask. I would want to say that most people reside in those places now simply because accommodation in Lagos has not only become very scarce, but it has also become very, very expensive. That most Nigerians, especially people coming from outside Lagos, cannot afford to comfortably rent a house and live in there in Lagos. Some people too will find it almost impossible to rent a shop or a space from where they can be find their space or selling whatever services and goods they might want to sell. So we should tackle the problem from the root. It is not the best that people should sleep under the bridges because you find out all sorts of kinds are being brewed from those places. You also see some young Nigerians, boys and girls, making babies and rearing them under those bridges. You also find out people living under those bridges, trading all sorts of narcotics and drugs. So, if we as a nation, we want to take care of those people, ensure that some of these mischiefs that I've mentioned are taken care of. We must be looking at providing very cheap open accommodation for the less privileged in the society. We should stop pulling down people's shops and spaces from where they are selling their goods and services by wings and caprices. Simply because we want a civic environment. The primary responsibility of government is not just to provide security, but also to provide means of livelihood for the Nigerian people. These are areas in which all the government that we have had since 1999 have failed Nigerians woefully. So make a decree a thousand times that people should vacate under those bridges, they should stop uh, flying their face on top of the bridges. It is never likely to be effective, no matter how many arrests that we make on the daily basis. All right, Tunde Kolawale, let's move away from that now. Uh, looking at the Daily Independent newspaper, Senate is saying we will bring back the federal government and ASU on that negotiation table. But what difference will this make or what difference can this make? Uh, 12 months, ASU is saying that, I mean, three months, I beg your pardon. Uh, extending the strike by another three months. Now and also, ASU is also asking that the students avoid confrontation. We'd like to share your thoughts on this one. Well, this strike has been going on for so long. If the Senate or the National Assembly were perceptive, if they were sensitive to the plight of the students and also that of their teachers, they would have intervened before the situation degenerated to this level. For me, this is coming rather too late. But it is better to be late than not to do anything at all. If they are able to come in and bring the answer and the federal government to the negotiation table and they succeed, I think it is a plus, plus for education in Nigeria. It is also the good news for the industry teachers and their students. But I have my doubt that the proposal of the Senate will work if we take a cue from what the authorities or from what the federal government are saying. What the federal government is saying is that they don't have the resources to meet the demand of ASU. So if the resources are not there, and ASU is still insisting on those demands being made, the negotiation might not work out. 
the way the Senate would have wanted this term to work out. The other area is uh, the fruit of the asso is far deeper than we are seeing it. I have a suspicion that the ASU people have embarked on this bitter strike, principally because of the kind of jumbo salaries and allowances that the people in the National Assembly, that the Nigerian politicians are receiving. Because when you look at it, a university teacher who has taught a politician to earn a degree cannot earn uh, 500,000 naira in a month, and the school fees or the student has been taught. If I mean by attention becomes a politician, he starts to earn millions of naira on a monthly basis. The answer is probably considering. And this is not equitable at all. So, I have always advised that this differential salary structure that we have brought to this country will need to endorse our rest. I would prefer for anybody who works for any federal government institution, I would have preferred anybody who works for the state to earn salary from level 1 to level 17 as provided in the civil service structure. What should be different is uh, maybe the peculiarity of the allowances that they will earn. The university professor, for example, will earn marching allowance, they will earn research allowance, they will earn wardrobe allowance, and some of these other auxiliary allowances. The, Doctors and nurses who earn hazard allowance, night allowance, and then um, some of these other allowances. And then we can take it like that. If we have a uniform for that, it's possible. And we start in person, just by virtue of being politicians, who earn Jumbo profit, I mean Jumbo salary. Tunde Kolawale. Tunde, Tunde Kolawale. Um, the, the question here is, what difference do you think it would make with the Senate intervening in the issue of, I mean, this disagreement between ASU and the federal government? Would, would it yield any result? Would it change anything? I doubt it. I doubt it. Just like I said, the federal government doesn't have the resources. Furthermore, we must realize that there is no status of our life that is properly funded today. They go to the hospitals, they are in comatose structure. When you look at the infrastructure, the infrastructure that are run down, but, but the, the issue, are, But the issue of ASU is not just limited to finances or funds. I mean, you also have an issue that some persons have described as a bone of contention. We're talking about the payment system. The For ICP the, and all that. Yes. What the IPP thing is a, a criminal project that personally may should not have been treated by the federal government. Why would you ask that all university professors, all university teachers, to be put on the same payment platform like the ordinary people have? What I would expect is that this university should have its own payment platform which is the link to the National Investment Commission. So if you want any information, you can access the payment platform of those universities to the university uh, commission. Or you go directly to the institution that is involved. That is the way things are going. Don't just love everybody together. But today, the federal government has awarded the contract which from information we are getting has come to a foreign company. And that the server of that foreign company is not even domiciled in Nigeria. That is to say, we will be paying those who are running the server for us in our currency in foreign exchange. What is difficult in designing a payment platform that the Nigerian people cannot do, that the Nigerian computer scientists cannot do, that the university teachers cannot do, but somebody somewhere 
want to allow this contract so that it will be any when you retain the company in our currency and be taking his own kids back to in our currency. All right, but I think that they have left government. We right. will continue to earn money by virtue of giving mm. that contract to the company involved. Uh, well noted by Mr. Kolaoli. Yeah, so, so, so because of time, so we can actually cover much ground. Uh, let us look at all the stories uh, also making headlines. Let's stay on the daily independent. Uh, from what we understand, the PDP, the People's Democratic Party, is actually going to decide the fate of the uh, aspirant uh, for today. But in the news, in the daily independent, uh, 2023 presidency, it's the turn of Southeast Obasanjo and Ampa uh, Adebanjo are quoted on that one. Would uh, the PDP deciding fates uh, today? How do you see it rolling? Uh, do you see any uh, preference uh, given to the uh, to the southeast uh, for the pre presidency uh, in uh, Nigeria? Uh, okay. If we are going to be equitable, we should uh, give it to the southeast. I agree with both of us and and uh, Mr. Dipanjo. The Nigerian civil war. Ended so many years ago. And if it has ended, there is no justification whatsoever not to have totally integrated the Southeast into the power equation in Nigeria. The agitation that we have in the Southeast today, in terms of maybe the activities of uh, IPO, in terms of the activities of uh, NASA, and some of these other things are good, it will probably not have been there if we have done the needful a long time ago, so we still continue to discriminate two or one section of the country, continue to hold on to power. When in fact, and indeed, they are also qualified hands in the South East. So I will prefer that both the PDP and the ACC consider this critical issue and consider the presidency to the southeast. But I also want to appeal to IPO, NASA, and some of these other self determination groups to really fix their flaws. Because as long as they continue to agitate that they want to break away from Nigeria, the rest of the country may not be comfortable giving the presidency or handing over the ruling of the country to them. Because the fear will be and they might use it to achieve the objectives of IPO and NATO and some of these other groups have been campaigning for for a long time ago. The NATO, the IPO, should adopt the, uh, the Gandhi strategy, which is uh, non violent to achieve the objectives. They have made their point, and the whole country has listened to them. And I think the entire country, except maybe for a few people, are now better disposed to a total integration of the Southeast into the matrix of the Nigerian nation. Tunde Kala, well, quickly, we know that this would be uh, a crux of a conversation, but we'd like to share your opinion yeah. on this one. It talks right. about the APC, uh, the PDP, amongst other political parties, asking for adjustment of uh, the 2023 election timetable. That's on the Daily Independent newspaper. What, what are you thought? What do you make of this? Well, the politicians again are trying to module of the political timetable because of their own inertia, because of their own tardiness, because of their own selfish objective. Look at the ranking that we have continued to see in all the major political parties. Given these political parties, they are like that you see impinge on the INEC timetable if they knew why didn't they put their house in order? and follow the timetable. This timetable was released since 2021. So there is no reason whatsoever for anybody to be clamoring that the timetable should be adjusted. Rather, we will insist that um, the different political parties should queue into the INEX timetable. And whatever conventions and uh, nominations they want to do, 
in selecting the, the flag bearer, it should be done in tandem with the timetable of IMX. We don't want anything that would disturb that timetable time, that time and also create the impression that the government that is in power today will not want to leave from 2023. Insecurity is a major issue. What's this thing with the Daily Independent? And it talks about 35 people killed in the Northeast in a decade, according to a report. You also have 2.5 million people displaced. Also, mm -hmm. Metis Allah is also saying that insecurity in the Southeast is not targeted at headers. Yes, yeah, I... There is no doubt about it that um, there has been too much killing of innocent people's blood in this country. Such that life no longer makes any meaning in Nigeria. And that's uh, one of the reasons why this government has always been taken to task as regards its responsibility to provide security for the entire people of Nigeria as his primary responsibility. 35,000, I'm not even sure that only the Nigerian Civil War that we lost as much as uh, 35,000 people in the northern and the southwest part of the country. It's majorly in the southeast that the war was uh, confined into. But now, the insecurity is no longer localized. It is all over the country. We should, as a nation, find a way to stop all these non-state actors from disrupting our lives and from shedding the flaws of their innocent people. With what is happening in the South, I have also always said this, that blaming everything on Marco, blaming everything on my fault, it's not the best way to go. Or saying that I thought is the one targeting the full and other might not make too much sense. Sometimes you might have a term for the People just want to create wrong impression, do propaganda, do blackmail, who target certain persons, kill and name them, and try to blame them on some of these self-determination groups in the Southeast. You will recollect that not too long ago, in the Southeast here, certain people were arrested who were engaged in kidnapping. And they were found to address like the full army people to carry out their nefarious activities. Invariably, they were trying to deflect the attention that would have been focused on them if they are dressed properly like Europe and men. They want to shift the blame to the full army people. And so, I think so, this but, but contrary, contrary to the reports that we've been having, especially with this yeah. administration, that, I mean, the, sec uh, the security situation of the country, uh, we're yep. on top of it and that we have handled it. Do you think as a country, because we're, if we're talking a decade, we're looking at 10 years spanning, do you think that we have been very, um, we have been in control when it has to do with the fight against uh, banditry or we're on top of the situation in terms of security? 2.5 million people have been displaced. Next year, we have not been in control of anything. The government of the day, and even the one before, Usually we'll tell you they're on top of it. Just not to create a panic among the people. Just to give the people hope. Is that a diplomatic way of handling the situation? They know they are not in control. We have been at this war for about 10 years. It started as a tiny thing in the Northeast. And it has now engulfed the entire country. If they were on top of it, they would have slipped this in the bus a long time ago. But it is still not impossible to rein in these non-state actors that are making life very difficult or impossible for our people if the political will is there. What I have seen is that on the part of the government, 
on the part of the head of security and the rank and file, the political will is not there. It would appear to me that not, not many people are convinced and are ready or patriotic enough to die for Nigeria to do what is required to rein this insecurity. Because Nigeria is seen as a no man's land, a nation that is not worth dying for. And so if you have people in the security, people in the executive arm of government that are not ready, are not patriotic enough to lay down their life for the nation. Thank you so much. We have to let you go at this point. Uh, we appreciate Thanks your Thanks for time. having me. Right. Uh, thank you. You have a great day. Uh, we wish you the same. Thank you so much okay. to Nicola yeah. Wale. He's a legal practitioner, has been part of the conversation on the papers this morning. Looking at the front pages of the papers. But the question comes to mind if we have leaders who pay attention to the news, whether or not... Uh, it would be anything to go by. I mean, verifying and following some of these reports that we have every other time on our national dailies. But it would be a conversation for another time. That's the size of it on the paper review this morning. We will definitely let you know what happened today in history. And when we return, we'll head straight to our first major conversation right here on the show. Please stay with us. <laughs>